Hi, welcome to Crap with Countess Caroline. Celtic rock music has not only played in Ireland, Scotland and Wales, it has firmly cemented itself onto a worldwide stage, including Australia. Hailed as one of the world's premier Celtic rock bands, Claymore is preparing to hold one more show in Melbourne before they embark on their European tour. And today we have the founding member, William Hutton with us. Welcome, William. Oh, thanks for having me. Not a problem. Um, thank you for doing an interview with me. Uh, you're more than welcome. It's, uh, it's nice to actually uh, be talking about music and events again. So Yeah, after COVID. Mm. Mm. How did that affect you being in lockdown? Yeah, well, look, I mean, uh, personally, I, I went through it quite well. It certainly affected uh, music and the arts and it was, I mean, it was, I think it was pretty much the first thing to be shut down and the last thing to be opened up. So it's been really tough for a lot of musical friends and band members included, you know, but um, uh, it's, it's just, what can you do? You have to do the right thing. And, and we all did. And hopefully now we're coming out the other side. Yeah. Now, yeah. you started your band in Scotland in the late 70s as a duo with Richard Gibbons. and then. And then you emigrated to Australia in about 1984, where you mm -hmm. rebirthed the band and it has evolved into the current lineup of seven musicians. How have you found that transition from Scotland to Australia? Oh, look, and when I first came here, it was a pure culture shock and weather shock. Everything was, uh, I mean, I left Scotland and it was minus 13 degrees. Wow. And I got to Australia and it was 45 degrees. So I'd <laughs> never felt heat like it in my life. And I, I turned up at the airport with a giant iron sweater on. And, <laughs> you know, it was all rugged up for winter and walked out the doors into an oven. But uh, Where were you based? What was that? Where were you based when you first came out? Uh, when I first came out, I came straight to Melbourne and I was living in uh, Sunshine. Sunshine? Uh, we, yeah, we had a, a family friend who lived there and he said, oh, if ever you come out, you know, you can come and stay with me until you get established. So that that's what we did. Okay. And Sunshine sounded so wonderful, you know, you, you think, oh, that, a town called Sunshine. It must be lovely. And then you got four seasons in one day. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the Scottish weather is a bit like that as well. Yeah. What got uh, it's always raining. Oh, what got you into music in the first place? Oh, I, 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 I always had, I've always had a really strong interest in uh, the, the Celtic culture. So music, dance, arts. And um, uh, I followed a lot of Scottish bands, bands like the Corries, uh, the Tannehill Weavers, uh, you know, traditional bands from Scotland and Ireland. And I just always liked the music. So, but when I, the, the, the first time I got into playing music or uh, it was actually a dare. I was at university studying and uh, someone for a joke put my name and Richard Gibbon's name down on a, a volunteer list for the Christmas concert, oh, saying yeah. that we were folk musicians and we'd never done anything in our lives. So to call their bluff, we, we got a couple of guitars and learned three songs and that was the start. Oh, that was a start. I, yeah. I, I'm actually half Scottish myself, and right. my mother steered me towards the Bay City Rollers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not one of my favourites, but there you go. <laughs> my, <laughs> my wife loved them. <laughs> yeah. And my sister was steered towards Rod Stewart. So that's about right. the only two people in Scotland that I know. Right, okay. Um. Now, for people who aren't familiar with Celtic rock music, can you please mm -hmm. explain exactly what it is and how you would describe the music that you typically typically create? Oh, look, uh, I get we play uh, a lot of self-penned music, but we also play a lot of traditional music. Uh, and traditional music would normally be played on traditional instruments like fiddles and guitars and uh, bazookis and and percussive drums and. Uh, and we've just taken that music and added, you know, electric guitars and bass guitars and uh, drums and turned it into rock music. So it's based in the Celtic culture, but it, we've rocked it up a bit. 
Yeah, I noticed you do do ACDC. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, it's become a, a concert favourite everywhere we go. If we don't play it, we get we get into serious trouble. I, and we really enjoy it. I, and originally, our first sound engineer here in Australia was uh, a, a chap called John Boshua, and he was ACDC sound engineer. Huh. So that, that was the connection. Well, I hope you've got the bagpipes in there as well. Oh, we do. Yeah, we've got one of the best pipers in the world, if, uh, if I don't say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of your concerts also include Celtic dancers who give a yeah. very high energy performance to the program. Um, is this a means to engage with the audience, perhaps on more of a personal level? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we uh, all, a lot of our music uh, and the dance is... Uh, you know, join in, sing along, and we encourage that pretty much all the way through any of our shows. Uh, I think that's a big part of Celtic uh, music and culture is to get everybody to join in wherever they can. So if they know the words, sing along. If they know the dances, get up and dance. Yeah. And uh, we're lucky to have uh, a group of uh, Celtic dancers, uh, the Glenbrae Celtic dancers, uh, in fact, who have danced with us pretty much since we arrived in Australia, all through the different variations of the band. And as the girls grow up through the dance school, um, they have to get to 18 before we allow them to pretty much come and perform with the band because most of the venues are licensed. Yeah. And uh, I really do, myself and also the, the teacher, uh, Bernadette Ray, we don't want to be responsible for children at adult venues so we wait until they've reached a, a proper age before they can actually come and join in with the band. Will any of those girls go with you on your European tour? Oh yeah they, they pretty much every time we go they come uh, so we always have between four and eight dancers that normally travel with us. Uh, it's a bit like river dance I guess you could call it you know it's uh, the girls uh, pop out and dance uh, and, and they choreograph all the dancing themselves, a mixture again of uh, traditional dancing and both mostly Scottish, but a few Irish steps in there and and uh, contemporary dance. So, yeah. Now, you've performed all over the world. What's the best part about performing before a live audience? Oh, I, I think the feedback that you get from the audience, I think any musician would say that or performer that, yeah, the most exciting thing about performing is uh, the energy you actually get back from people. Yeah. So mm. when, the, when the audience is flat and quiet, it can be quite difficult, you know. So we always encourage, as I said earlier, lots of participation and singing along because it makes us feel good, makes them feel good and makes the world go round. Yeah. I've recently read that one of your favourite performances was at the National Celtic Festival down on the foreshore at Port Arlington, Victoria. What makes Port Arlington so special? Oh, look, we, we've been so lucky with the National Celtic Festival in Port Arlington. Uh, I, I think we've pretty much played every one of them since their inception. It started in Geelong as a, a small folk festival type uh, venue and it's just grown and um, I think the weather reminds me of home it's it's, it's a winter festival so it's kind of uh, cold and wet but you know everything's indoors and big marquees and the audience just love it and we've connected with a lot of the locals and we've made lots of friends in the area so every time it comes up we just can't wait to get there in fact it was last weekend so yeah. we, we had a ball now, congratulations on five studio albums. Can we expect album number six soon? Well, we're busy writing some material. We, we, we tried during COVID to um, uh, write and record some material, but because most of the guys lived too far apart, none of us, none of us could get together. We had to try and do it via Zoom. Yeah. And, um, just with the inherent lags and timing and we just found it too difficult so i normally write the songs uh, write the lyrics uh, and then take a basic structure to the band and then we we write the melody together and grant 
Scroggy were uh, Piper. He writes all the uh, pipe tunes and brings them to us, and then we we build an arrangement around that. So we started that process again. I've got about 20 songs on the go, so we've definitely got enough for an album, and Grant's got quite a few new tunes. So uh, we're looking forward to getting into the studio and being able to do it. We just need to find a block of time where we can get it done. It must be really hard when you've got 20 songs to choose, what, 10, 12 of them for... Yeah, it can be, but often I'll bring 20 songs to the guys and, you know, instantly they'll cull it down to 12 and say, no, nah, it's no good, that's really good, that's... Because a... when you write it yourself, you it's kind of an insular process. And and you think it's good, but I always value the band member's opinion. And you know, they'll they'll soon tell me if it's rubbish. <laughs> Not rubbish. Um <laughs> now, a Celtic Christmas was an idea that you and good mate Australian Idol winner Damien Leith came up with after a couple of drinks one night. Yeah, that's that's true. What exactly was a Celtic Christmas? Oh, look, we, we, we'd always, we've been good mates for years and uh, we decided we wanted to uh, do some concerts together. And I was up in Sydney on a, on, a, on a kind of band foraging trip, setting up gigs and stuff and caught up with Damien. He was living there at the time and it was getting close to Christmas and we just said, why don't we make it a Christmas concert, you know? And that was about five or six years ago and we've pretty much done one every year since Damien hasn't made them all we haven't done them all together yeah. um, but um, I kind of started a tradition and we we definitely try and do a lot of things together where we can uh, in fact the last tour we did to Europe before Covid hit uh, Damien actually came with us as a member of the band and, and played keyboards and he just wanted to go on a tour, so he says, oh, can I come and just be in the background and, you know, and experience it? So he came along and, and played keyboards with us and some backing vocals, and it was great. We had a ball. Yeah. So, okay. Mm. Um, I'm going to ask you this question. If you could open for any artist, who would it be and why? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I guess, and... and and the rock music world, if I could open for somebody, I, uh, Led Zeppelin, being an old guy, <laughs> or Robert Plant, something like that. Uh, and and the Celtic music world, um, we've already, we've already, personally, we've already done one dream gig, and that was opening for uh, Kappa Cayley. It's a Scottish band, um, and there's another Scottish band, Run Rig. I would, uh, I would, I played on the same lineup. But we never actually opened for them. It was just a, an all day event. So, but That's yeah, they're, they're two of the traditional bands that, mm. you know, and thankfully I've managed to do it already. So, lots of bands these days are jumping out of their genre and they're experimenting mm -hmm. with other genres. Is that something that you can do later down the track? I think we already do. I mean, because of the rock music aspect to what we do. And some of our self-written songs, I get you would find it hard to maybe notice a Celtic um, connection, except for my accent. Yeah. That would be the only thing that would possibly make it Celtic. You know, there would be modern rock songs, but we st we do try and, and stick to our genre because it works. Yeah. Okay. Now you're excited about returning to Memo Music Hall for the final performance before you embark on your European tour. What mm -hmm. can holders and fans expect to see and hear at this, your final performance of the year? Oh, well, I mean, the, 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 the dancers will be there, the band are all fired up and we've, we've, we've been practicing and, and playing a lot and we've just done the National Celtic Festival. So we're, we've really, uh, got our mojo back as we like to say you know but so yeah it will be an exciting uh uh energy packed gig with lots of dancing lots of singing uh, everything you would come to expect at a, a claymore show 
So we're hoping we get a lot of people there. There's still a few tickets available, so. Yep, Now I believe there's a very special guest artist who'll be joining you on stage. You gonna Yeah, get we're a, a good friend of ours, uh, Anna Sconti, who's a, an amazing uh, blues guitarist and, and singer. Uh, we just thought we'd do something out of the box this time. And, uh, and so Anna's going to come along. And actually, uh, one of the one of the guys in, in Claymore does play with Anna now and again in a trio. And that's where we got the idea. So so he'll he'll have two jobs for, for the night. So we've got the Anna Sconti trio. Uh, so bass, drums and guitar and just amazing voice and amazing music. So it will be worth the ticket price on its own. Right. And tickets can be got at memo music hall dot com dot au it's on saturday the 2nd of july at 7 30 p.m that's at the memo yes. hall um in st kilda in st kilda any chance you're going to do some recording maybe with damien lee oh look we've 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 sat down a couple of times and tried to to uh, write some songs and uh, i mean i would love to and i'm sure he would love to as well so and Damien's a prolific writer and he, he's a great producer of other people and he writes for a lot of other people. So it's definitely not out of the question. It's just uh, he's a busy guy in Breakfast Radio up in up in New South Wales and also with his music career. Yeah. And uh, I'm often, you know, busy with our music career and traveling. So it's finding the time, but we'll definitely get it done. And what can we expect from you for 2023 when you finally well, get? Yeah, uh, lots more tours, um, a new album, we hope. In fact, yeah, a new album and um, just more of the same, but better. <laughs> well, William, thank you for talking to me. I really appreciate it. And I, I can get you back on the program next year and we find out how that tour went lovely i'd love to do that and uh thanks very much for having me on not a problem thank you you're welcome bye